Hey everyone, it's Miss Tennis One, and in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, becoming a teacher in the state of California. So, um, if you guys didn't know, I am a teacher. This is my third year teaching. I taught for about a year and a half on my intern credential, and um, I'll go over that and get into that a little bit later. But I wanted to make this video because. I don't know I just feel some kind of way about um, about this whole social media thing this whole YouTube thing um, being on Instagram it's just that you see a lot of people on there like being real flashy about theirs and it seems as if their life is glamorous and like they're making it and like I don't know it just they kind of like make you want to be them but um I don't know I'm just here with like a little reality check because I don't know it 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 seems like they make it seem as if education um, isn't important nowadays and it's just I don't know I just feel like it's the wrong idea to give our youth nowadays education is so important in the world that we live in um, you know your education is something that you fall back on if YouTube didn't exist you know it's like some of these people you see on here it's like where would you be like you need to get a real job um, <laughs> you need to go back to school and get your education what if you know anything could happen and I'm just saying like if YouTube went out of business or all of a sudden they started charging to watch YouTube I don't know anything could happen and um, it's just good to have something to fall back on like I love YouTube I love Instagram I love doing all of this stuff but I'm not that active in this community and in this world uh, because I do have a career and I understand that for some people it is their job to do this but I'm also saying that it's good to have something to fall back on you know it's like your your ego is all the way up here and it needs to be more so <laughs> down here <laughs> but anyways um, let's just jump right into it okay so becoming a teacher in the state of California I'm just gonna give you guys the five most basic things that you need to do okay so I have my little notes here so I won't get off track but the first thing that you need to do is pass the CBES and that is the California basic educational skills test and um, it just assesses your basic skills in reading, writing, and mathematics, I believe. I took that so long ago until I really can't even remember. For me, um, I'm special education, so I had to do, I had to take the multiple subjects um, CSET. And here is one of my study books. California subject examination for teachers and I have multiple subjects um, if you're doing something like science or math uh, you wouldn't have multiple subjects you would have um, whatever the science and math version of this book so since most of special education is in a self-contained classroom you do teach all of these subjects just from my experience experience um, in my whole teaching credential program I would recommend um, science math or special education as the best subject to get your teaching credential in because those are the high area needs that's what's in demand right now um, you know you you won't have to go out and look so hard for a job and be in competition with all of these people you know I got hired as a teacher and I was still in school like that's how high the demand is in special education after you have passed your CBES and your CSET now you can apply for the program you find a school uh, for me I did my teaching my teaching credential um, with National University uh, because I hadn't passed my CSET or my CBES yet and they let me in under like restrictions of course but I think that was back in 2009 I think nowadays um, you must have those pass before you can enter in any program so entering into the program 
um, you go through a series of interviews, um, you fill out the long application, you go get fingerprinted, you send your fingerprints to the CTC, which is the California Teaching Commission, you get your, um, your certificate of clearance, um, you get your first aid, you get your CB, CPR, and your tuberculosis clearance as well. I believe that's all. After you're enrolled in school, into your program, uh, there's two routes that you can take. You can take the intern route, which is the one that I did, or you can student teach. Um, for me, I got very, very lucky because I was already working out of school. Oh, and guys, before you decide like that you want to become a teacher, you need to go do some classroom observations first in the area that you're thinking about teaching in. I was working for four years already as an instructional assistant in special education, so there were no surprises. I knew about the behaviors. Um, I knew that, you know, at any time you can get hurt. I'm in moderate severe uh, classroom settings so you know I have scars I have battle wounds on me like I already expected that I knew that it was bound to happen sometimes so just make sure you go and observe the setting that you want to be in so that you can get a feel for it so that you won't go in there you know 100% blind like I was saying for me I got lucky because I was already in the school setting so um, once my administrators found out that I was intern ready, meaning that I had my CBEST, I had my CSET, I was enrolled in a, um, you know, a university completing my program of study. Um, they offered me a position. So in order to get your teaching credential early, like I did, or not get your credential early, but get a, um, get your intern credential that's what that's what it's called you need to be offered a position first so I was offered a position and the university they filled out my per paperwork they took it to the you know they sent it to the CTC and then you know a couple weeks later I have my own classroom all right so the fourth thing that you need to do and this is after you've passed your your CBES, your CSET, you're enrolled in a program already um, while you're taking your classes and you know getting your experience you need to pass the third test which is the RECA for me taking this test uh, it was rather hard because you're giving a whole you're given scenarios and case studies um, this is just just all about reading instruction how to teach reading um, how to complete assessments how to monitor students progression you need to pass that test finish up your classes and the last thing that you do is um, once you've completed everything your I don't know what whatever your program requirements are your TPAs um, you know for me I was an intern so I had to have a site supervisor at my school I had to have a university supervisor that would come to my school and watch me give lessons watch how I interacted with the kids watch how um, I interacted with my staff I mean it just like you know for me getting my credential was the best thing that I could have ever ever done <laughs> but I'm not gonna lie about the pressure that you're under the stress that you endure um, just it's so much and it's so much pressure guys but I'm telling you it's so worth it in the end once you complete everything your school recommends you to the CTC which is the California Teaching Commission uh, they recommend you for whatever credential you're doing so once they recommend you it's the commission the board it's their um, job to go over you know make sure you've met all of their requirements so they are the ones who approve you for your credential I have an education instruction specialist credential and my specialization is in moderate severe disabilities I was officially um, approved for this credential I think in May which was a few months ago so remember that I've already been teaching for two years so those two years that I taught I taught on my intern credential once you get your credential it really doesn't end there 
So I'm back in school right now, um, clearing my credential. I have a preliminary credential right now, and preliminary just means, you know, I'm a new teacher, you know, it's just the beginning. So in order for the preliminary part to be taken off your credential, you need to clear your credential. So I'm back in school clearing my credential, and what that consists of is four classes, and you do an induction plan, and, you know, induction plan, you know, what does induction mean? Induction is the act of inducing something. So when you induce something, you, you, you want to get to the next level. And that's what I'm doing right now. I have my teaching credential. I've met all the requirements. Um, I'm an adequate teacher. But with the induction plan in your classes now, they're professional development classes. You want to go from an adequate teacher to a highly qualified teacher and perfect your craft. So, you know, I'm working on my weak areas. You know, because I'm in a moderate severe setting, you know, I don't have the skills that I want to have in assessment. Um, I could get better in lesson planning. I mean, you know, it's just a lot of things that you need to perfect. <laughs> this is your craft. This is your career and you want to be the best that you can be. So that's why they created like the whole, you know, the whole clear thing. I know that, you know, this language, it might be confusing for someone, um, someone just thinking about doing it thinking about just getting started and I was in the same position when I looked at the prerequisites when I looked at the requirements um, it just it just seemed like it was so much and I didn't really think that I could do it but you know I did and it took a lot of hard work it took perseverance you know you need someone to support you through your program because I'm not gonna lie you're gonna go through it I don't know why like getting your teaching credential <laughs> is so hard in the state of California um, my mom <clears throat> was my support system and you know you're gonna need someone to support you someone to lean on someone to cry to because I remember one time I got a C. You know, you need to maintain a certain GPA throughout the whole entire program. And it's especially important if you're interning. You know, I was already working as a teacher and still in school. So I needed a certain GPA. And I got a C because of a mistake. Like, you know, I got a zero on an assignment. And I think I cried for like two days and my mom and my nephew they just had to comfort me because you know you go through it like this is your life you know like there's no c's in this program you need to be strong enough to run your classroom deal with your aides complete your workload communicate with administrators communicate with parents it's it you know it it's not easy and especially when you're a new teacher you're still getting used to everything so like I said um, it will be very tough and very stressful at first but you know once you start to get the hang of it once you perfect your craft everything runs smoothly and let me tell you in special education there is not a shortage of jobs <laughs> So, I don't know, you guys, just think about it, think about, think about, you know, enrolling in a program, getting back into school, you know, having a plan, building a career for yourself instead of, you know, trying to jump on some bandwagon that you see. Just leave, please, guys. Um, I will do my best to answer every single question. Um, I know that it might be confusing to you guys but just do your research go look up you know becoming a teacher in the state of California and leave all questions below and I I will do my best to answer them so I hope I was able to help you guys a little all right bye